Hello again. We're going to talk about the equilibrium constant now and uh, how that relates to pressure. So what are we doing if we're dealing with gases or reaction that involves just gases? And how do we relate the equilibrium constant that we saw that was before related to pressure or concentration now to pressure? Um, so we're going to jump into the slides here. Maybe. Yes. All right. So equilibrium constants for reactions involving gases. So what we saw before is we would have a reaction and we were looking at the concentrations, usually the molarity. So if um, you saw uh, products C and D, reactants A and B, you see those brackets around those, those typically indicate concentration. So this is more specifically the equilibrium constant with respect to concentration, K sub C. Well, what if we were dealing in all gases and instead of having the concentration we have the pressures well for gases the pressure is related to the concentration so we could do the same thing having the products over the reactants but now looking at the pressure of each of those products and the pressure specifically partial pressure of each of those reactants so that would be k sub p so this is the equation for uh, K sub C, the equilibrium constant with respect to concentration, and this is the equation for K sub P, the equilibrium constant with respect to pressure. And uh, if we had all those values, if we had the partial pressures of C, D, A, and B, we could just plug them in and we would know our K sub P. But is there a relationship between K sub C and K sub P? Yes, there is. So if we only knew the equilibrium constant with respect to concentration, could we find the equilibrium constant with respect to pressure or vice versa? Yes, via this equation right here, which is K sub P equals K sub C times R times T raised to the change in N or the delta N. So R now is our ideal gas constant again, but since we're talking about pressure, we have to use the ideal gas constant with pressure units, 0 0.08206. And our temperature is going to be in Kelvin because our ideal gas constant temperature units are in Kelvin. So make sure you're using the right R. Make sure you convert your temperature to Kelvin. Delta N is the most important part here. This part's new. Be very careful about this. This is the difference between the number of moles of reactants and moles of products, or specifically the gas uh, moles. So you would take products minus reactants. So we would need to look at how many overall um gas molecules do we have on the reactant side and how many do we have on the product side and then i would take the amount on the product side and subtract the amount on the reactant side if they're identical if we start with two uh, moles of gas on the reactant side and we end with two moles of gas on the product side then delta n would be zero rt raised to zero is one so kc times one is just kc so you can see these would be identical. You have several slides here that go through deriving that relationship. You can look at this for fun. You're not gonna be responsible for any of this. I'm not gonna ask you to do this. So let's just look at uh, some sample problems. Under which conditions or circumstances are K sub P and K sub C equal for the following reaction? So we have our stoichiometric coefficients, lowercase a, b, c, and d. A and B goes to form product C and D, and you'll notice everything is a gas. Is it when lowercase a plus B is equal to lowercase C plus D? Only if the reaction is reversible or only if the equilibrium constant is small. Well, we need delta N to be equal to zero, so that means the moles of gas on the left-hand side has to be equal to the moles of gas on the right-hand side. Let's look at uh, this in a little bit more detail. Let's jump into the whiteboard here. I'm just going to steal the example problem for the book for right now. So we're going to need to be given a specific gas reaction and know what that is. Um, and of course, I made the mistake of looking at my tablet instead of looking at the screen. There we go. So if we have 2NO, and that's a gas, plus O2 gas, those are our reactants, goes to form this product, 2 N O two gas. And we are told what the case of P is. It is 2.2 times 10 to the 12 at 25 degrees C. So we have our pressure, we have our specific reaction. 
this reaction and the stoichiometry is going to be one of the most important parts because we have Kp equaling Kc times Rt raised to the delta n. So we're going to find out what that delta n is. That's the moles, gas moles of product minus the gas moles of reactants. So I have NO2, that's my gas, and I have two in front of that. So on the product side, and that's all we have. On the product side, we're gonna have two moles of gas. On the reactant side, both my reactants are gases. I have one, two in front of that, and a one in front of that. So we have three moles of gas on the reactant side, so the delta N in this instance is negative one. It can be a negative number, it could be a positive number. So what are we gonna do with that? So we have K sub P, equals K sub C, and then we have our R, the ideal gas constant, liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and that's gonna be times our temperature, which was 25 degrees C, which is 298 K, and that's raised to the negative one. Now that's not the same thing as saying one, times 10 to the negative one, this is actually bringing it to that power. And if it's a negative power, it's essentially the same thing as putting it on the bottom, saying this times this is the same thing as this raised to the negative one power. So we are gonna have 2.2 times 10 to the 12, equals Kc times one over that. Let's go ahead and carry that out and see what the actual value is. So I don't have to write quite as many numbers. 24.45 and Kelvin here would cancel. So I'd have liters, atmospheres over moles. I need to find K sub C. So the way I'm going to do that is by um, multiplying both sides through by this. Oop, there we go. So when we do that, we get very good. Oop. That as our equilibrium constant with respect to concentration. So not the exact same thing as our equilibrium constant with respect to pressure. And that is because we do see a change in the moles of gas as we go through. So make sure you're setting that up correctly. Make sure you're figuring out the correct delta N, which is gonna be products minus reactants and knowing um, how to handle that. So if instead we said, let's say whatever, we have uh, um, 2A, which is a gas. Here, let's make it a capital A. Say we have 2A, which is a gas and it's gonna combine with 2B, which is also a gas, and it's gonna make uh, 2C. In this case, our delta N should be equal to reactant or products, which is just a two, minus reactants, which is a four, so that would be a negative two. So again, how to treat that? We're gonna to have to do, in that case, we'd have um, RT raised to the negative two. That would look like this at 298 Kelvin, if this were at 25 degrees, because it's raised to the negative two, that is the exact same thing as saying one over this squared. So if you had two raised to the negative two, what is that really? It's one over two squared or one over four. If it were a positive value, you would leave it on the top. So if delta N were two, then you would just have um, 0 0.08206 times 
times 298 squared. You wouldn't need to move it to the bottom. But that's how you want to treat that. Like I said, it's not the same thing as 1 times 10 to the negative 1 or 1 times 10 to the negative 2. It's actually raised to the negative 2 power or negative 1, whatever it happens to be. Um, hopefully that helps remove any confusion. Big takeaway here is what is that equation for go from KP to KC? Are you calculating delta N the correct way? And then are you applying it the correct way? Make sure you work those end of chapter problems, practice these so you really get that concept down. The best way to know you get it down is practice. All right, that's all for these. I'll see you again on the Le Chatelier uh, video. So.